Oliver from Rugby League, in my opinion, here. And it is time for the second week of the 2021 NRL Final Series, the NRL Semi Final Week. Uh, we have t- six teams overall left in the competition. Four of them will play this weekend. Uh, but I'm joined once again by the great man, the right man. How are you today, Righty? Thanks, Ollie. Thanks for having me on board again. Share a few opinions. <laughs> yeah, well, how you been, mate? No, I've been good. Good. Enjoyed the footy on the weekend. Yeah. Intrust Super Cup Grand Finals as well. This uh, not Grand Finals, semi final start this weekend too. So yeah. Plenty of footy to watch. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear. Um, I'll, I'll definitely be keeping an eye on the Intrust Super Cup, especially now we're headed into the finals. Keep up to date with what's going on with that competition, especially because here in New South Wales, obviously the New South Wales Cup season's been cancelled once again. So in terms of a second-tier comp, um, that's all we've really got in the competition now. But for the NRL, are you ready to get into this weekend's games? Yeah, mate. Shoot. Yeah, so yeah. So first up, we have the Manly Ringer Seagulls, your team, up against the Sydney Roosters. It is fourth versus fifth. The loser goes home. The winner goes on to face South Sydney. In next week's preliminary final, righty for both teams, how do they go about winning this game? And then give us your prediction. Well, for Manly, last week they just got a footballing lesson from Melbourne. Um, poor completion rates, undisciplined with and without the football, did gave away too much ball, had to do too much tackling, got punished for every mistake. This week. The focus will be on moving past that. They'll want to. It all start with the middle. Their forwards will have to. Um, their forwards will have to dominate the middle, if not dominate, at least nullify that Roosters pack, uh, which will be a big ask with Radley, uh, Warrior Hargraves, and Tupanua on an edge, Angus Crichton. There's plenty of big names there. Where I think Manly, what Manly went away from on the weekend, they didn't play the natural style of game. They started playing panic footy and this they need to they'll go out there and try to build pressure. They get they do a lot of um crossover plays where turning blokes on the inside, picking up runners, etc. And they do a lot of like test out the honesty in the middle. That's normally like Turbo gets it on those drop off plays and he's either picking up a runner or he's challenging the line himself. So that's where I think they'll try and test the Roosters out. Um, uh, test out the likes of Takiyaho if he ends up playing, things like that. They'll want to be trying to roll them on these edges. I imagine they're going to bring a lot of – Matt Ikevalu for the Roosters, he didn't have his best game last week with his hands. I reckon they're going to – I reckon Cherry's going to throw up a couple of uh, – plenty of big Tory bombs down his side. They're going to test him out. What sides have had a bit of joy against the Roosters? They kicked down Tupo's side, where not so much directly to uh, to Tupo, but they try and hang the ball up on like three or four defender, like the short man in the line. So that way, one of the chasing come through and either a bat back or try and cleanly take it. That's when uh, when Big Tino scored last week. He picked up the crumbs from a, from a bat back. From across from the cross kick that they put on the head of the short man, Manly will be trying to do a few things like this. Their forwards will be wanting to assert their dominance after getting schooled a bit last week. Jared Croker will be back. Croker adds he's that solid dummy half. Not that Lawton did a bad job, but Croker's been their starting dummy half all year. So he, Croker's defence very good. He leads the line speed. He'll, he'll be a plus coming in, but they need to control the ball. They need to build pressure with their attack. They'll be they'll be trying there. They'll be testing them out wide where the Roosters concede a few tries on their edges. So I would imagine with on day, down that right side with Daly Cherry Evans, they'll look to attack uh, Kieran in the centres. He's been playing some good footy. Uh, Drew Hutchison been very doing a very solid job in the halves. They'll look to test them out. But to do that, they need to be getting quick play the balls and getting on top like that. That way 
Turbo does his best work when they're off quick play the balls, and it's just almost like he comes in and just picks his moment and wants the ball. Turbo, they they nullified him pretty well, Melbourne, and he still ran for a hundred plus meters. I think I can't see him playing that bad again. Um, another thing too with Manly, you're not going to keep Tedesco out of the game entirely. Tedesco had 50 touches in a game the other week, but they want to try and uh, nullify him a bit. So Cherry Evans and that, as I said, they'll be kicking a lot to Ikevalu. They'll be trying to kick behind Tupo and uh, as well, just to try and get give Tedesco the ball in position that he doesn't normally like. But because he bounces up all over the field, you want to try and not give him that first carry um, coming back from a kick because that's normally where you'll get him on the front foot, similar to how Turbo does, even though they're uh, different styles of fullback. I think, I think too, they're going to, like the young back rowers from Manly, uh, Olakowatu and Schuster, they they were a bit... They were a bit overawed in their first finals game. They'll learn from that. That'll be another thing. On the right to down Cherry side, they'll be trying to get him isolated on maybe Hutchison or out there near or between Hutchison and uh, Kieran and test them out um, and test out their honesty defensively. That's how I see it. They've got to go back and play their style of footy where they like to shift the ball, attack edges, lay the platform in the middle before that, start testing you out with these uh, turning people under against the grain. And you've got to complete well against the Roosters. Roosters, well, the Titans are very unlucky not to beat them last week. So they've got to take, like, say, Lamb, Hutchison, when Sam Walker comes on, they've got to be big spot targets all playing good footy, but you've got to overload them defensively and try and either one, you know, if you're not making breaks, you're getting quick play the balls down those edges. And that's where they would do their best work off. Manly got to get in the grind. Like, their forwards like Tapao, um, Joshua LA, um, Paseca when he comes on, Kepi, they've got plenty. Of, um, Dylan Walker was good last week in a beaten side. He was close to their best player. He'll come on and do a bit of with ball playing. So with Jake Travoyevic and Dylan Walker, that's when Cherry's at his best in club footy. He comes out, they set up shape of Dylan Walker or of Jake in the starting in the start and Cherry likes to skip outside defenders. He's a running half daily and that's his that's his strong suit. I think he's going to, uh, they're going to te- they're going to try and test out Tupo like with Saab there they sort of nullify each other. Tupo is fantastic in the air, but don't. But they'll be kicking down that side. It's just where Daly puts the ball down the uh, down the left side too. I'm expecting Schuster to bounce back. He just couldn't get into the game the other night, Josh Schuster. But he'll get he'll have a lot more touches, and with his ball playing at the line, I think he can create a few options down there. With the Roosters, they just. They always turn up to play. I know Sam Virrell's got named and he's got to go to the judiciary. That'll be interesting. I was surprised Virrell didn't get sin binned on the weekend for that, for making high contact with Brian Kelly when Kelly had to go off. That'll they'll lose. Like Virrell's is a good player, but dummy half's one of the positions there. You know, pretty light on. I'd say Ben Meshki, um, Meshki, I should say, comes in. He'll start. He'll go straight in. Start at dummy half. Yeah. I wouldn't imagine that they'd move Lock on Lamb to start at hooker. This is the thing. You've got to put yourself in position to build pressure. You can't be turning the ball over cheaply, coming out like Manly did a couple of times and giving away when when they'll fight to get back in the game at eighteen six. They gave away a few soft soft penalties. They the discipline. They have to be on discipline wise. With the Roosters, they made plenty of mistakes themselves and they still got away with the game. You've got to get in the grind with them and you've got to see who blinks first and Manly have to be up for this. The Roosters are putting in, but they were holding on by a fingernail the other night. If they can build enough pressure, Manly will score tries and I'm expecting a big game from Turbo. He won't be that bad twice. Teddy probably have a strong game himself. Turbo is obviously their strike weapon, 
But their halves set up a lot of tries at Manly. Those back rowers generate a lot of quick play of the balls. I'm expecting Morgan Harper to bounce back. He'll be marking Kieran because he'll be fanging for this game all week after having a poor, poor performance. Justin Olam's physicality just over like overpowered him. And Olam was generating a lot of the quick play of the balls down that side. So they'll be looking. Their line speed will be a lot better this week. I think they'll complete a lot more. I, then with the Roosters to key, Radley's a key. Him and Jake Trevojevic, they're similar styles of players in ball play and lock, and they can both brilliant defenders. He adds a lot having him in there. Only thing too with guys like him and JW and that, they sail pretty close to the wind with the penalties sometimes. So that's going to be a big thing. You can't, both sides can't afford too many penalties given teams' leg ups coming out. So it sets up a pretty tough battle. The Roosters don't go away. Manly hopefully should have enough, have enough petrol in the tank to get this. So, yeah, you're pretty, so it's pretty obvious which way I'm going. Croker's back. I think they'll be. I think they'll be burning from that loss. Roosters have been doing enough to get by for a while. Let's see if Manly can put them to the sword a bit and test them out on those edges and in the middle. And Turbo return to some form. I think they'll find it hard to handle him if they get if if the forwards are laying the platform and we're playing fast. Turbo will Turbo DCE four and they'll create enough points. Yeah, I have to agree with you, righty. I've got to go with the favourites here in the Manly side. It, it will be interesting to see how the Roosters do deal with Tom Trevojevic. Obviously, we've asked that every week this season as to how teams are going to try and deal with him. But after Melbourne were able to contain him the way they did, Trent Robinson's got to be coming into this one with a plan. We know how intelligent he is as a coach. He, he's going to have a plan to try and contain Tom Trevojevic. That'll be the interesting thing. The kick chase, the line speed, that's yeah. what you'll try and take from Melbourne's point of view and just try and be aware of where he is all the time. Like, they'll be, they'll have plenty of... They'll be coming out aggressive, so it's going to be that real grind for a while. And sides, both, like, both sides compete, conceded some points last week. I, you know, I just think Manly can capitalise on some of the Roosters... Um, uh, short shortcomings defensively and tighten up their own. Turbo, like, if he bounces back and has a good game, he doesn't need to have a 9 out of 10 game. That still lifts everybody around him. So, to Powell, OLA, Trevojevic, um, and Jake Trevojevic in the middle, if they start laying the platform, blokes, blokes like Haseka come on, Kepi, you know, they can do, and Walker comes on as another ball player. They can create some points there around the middle. When when South Sydney maintained the rage against the Roosters the other week, they were scoring points. Yeah. And Melbourne, and not Melbourne, I mean, the Raiders were creating plenty of chances against them. They just couldn't stop them defensively. So I think, yeah, so we, it's pretty obvious which way I'm going on. Yeah, we definitely both agree, tipping Manly to win in this one. But how about the next game, the Panthers versus the Eels? Righty, once again, how should both teams go about trying to win this game? And then who are you tipping? Well, with uh, Spencer Lino back, um, Sorensen's back on the bench, um, they'll have a bit more punch. Uh, Fisher-Harris, he'll be, he'll be better this week. So will Appy. They couldn't generate a lot of quick play the balls because simple reason South just manhandled them. Yeah. South were great. To To's kick returns were really limited and you can see that affected the middles a bit too. South defense was red hot. They'll get back to what the, the footy they play. As for the Eels, the Eels will come out with similar aggression that South did and they'll want to try and rattle their cage a bit. Um, I see Ryan Madison's back on the bench, another experienced edge player. The thing for Parra is uh, Ferguson and the young centre out there on that um, right side, they're going to get a lot of traffic coming down their way. I see Dylan Edwards is back at fullback. Um, the thing is you've got to pressure Cleary. 
and you've got to be able to stay in the fight with them. This is going to be, I think, I think the Panthers with those blokes like had come back. Yeah. You've got guys like Sorensen will come off the bench and add a bit there. Last week, Mitch Kenny was acting as a running back rower, and he was he was he did he played all right, but he's a dummy half, you know, who running like an edge back rower. I think they'll have learned from that, and I think they'll go through to to meet Melbourne the week later on the on the Saturday afternoon, which is I can't I, if they start controlling them in the middle. The thing too for Para, the Knights created. Knights created plenty of opportunities there and did well to stay right in that till the death. I I really think Cleary's gonna kick a lot better. They're gonna they'll they'll put a lot of pressure on Ferguson because he's Ferguson's playing good football. He's just got an error or two in his game. Yeah. So they're gonna be testing them out greatly down that side. And you can imagine Nathan Brown and Co are going to bring uh, Campbell Gillard against his own side. They'll be bringing plenty of aggression. Junior Paulo, they'll be coming. They'll be coming hard. But I just feel that Penrith are going to bounce back on this one, and they'll set up a big, a, a, a great prelim, a couple of very good prelims at Suncorp. Yeah, well, I feel like we're in for a cracker in this game. I'm also going with you in the Penrith side. They have to bounce back. Against South Sydney, I thought, especially into the second half, when South sort of threw them off their game plan a bit, Penrith sort of became their worst enemy. Silly mistakes, stupid errors that we haven't seen them make for the entire season. Um, I, I think that's one thing they will be dedicated uh, to fixing up, but I think that's something they will be able to fix up. They're a champion side, and they should be able to do so. Uh, the Eels... They're going to be strong. I feel like it could be a, a sort of one to twelve game. I, I feel like the Eels will put in that solid effort. They normally the match up well the end. Yeah, yeah. And, and Mitchell Moses had a blinder last week. He'll go, and it, he was running the ball a lot. And he'll go in with a yeah. similar mindset this week. Last week, Coach Bennett got in Coach Cleary's head and put him off, um, and put him off their game a bit. They'll be back for this. The, the Eels are going to try and, as I first said, they're going to try and rough them up. They're going to try and unsettle them. Brown, Brown, Campbell, Gillard, Junior, Paulo, they, uh, Papalihi, and that they're going to have, will bring it on those edges. They have to shut down Kick Owl, uh, which like which uh, South managed to. One of the highlights of the weekend was um, Jaden Sewer's shot. On, on Billy Kickow, that was phenomenal. And that proved how much dominance they had in the middle. Yeah. Um, who, oh, like when you think of it too, uh, Clint Gutherson's going to get a lot of those dead ball bombs that Cleary throws up that I was predicting last week, but they got enough kick pressure to take the edge off them. And young Blake Tafey, he, man, he yeah. had a strong game. He was very good through the final pass for a try. He had one blemish from a drop kick, but other than that, he was really went well. I just think, you know, they're going to have too much for him. You know, like you said, 1-12, to 12, they'll match up. It'll be a grind. I would be surprised if it's like an eight-point game, something like that, six, eight-point yeah. game. You know, maybe eight, yeah, six to eight-point game. Cleary could kick a field goal at a key time or they could win by eight. And Para won't go away. They look like they've got their mojo back a bit. But yeah, I mean, we'll see how this goes. It depends too how games are refereed, too. Like, but that it should be a grind up in uh, up in Mackay too. So yeah, I like games to be treated to two great games of footy. Yeah, and that's sort of I guess a silver lining we can take away from this season as well. What else would Mackay? Be getting a, a well, not it's sorry, it's not a double header, but two semi final really games, good. yeah, back to back days, Friday, Saturday night, yeah, which would be fantastic. Everyone's uh, everyone's fanging to watch these games now. You're in the business end, and the supporters of the teams left, they're you know, they're praying you're there in two weeks at Suncorp, yeah, that's it. Well, righty, thank you so much for joining me again tonight to preview. These cracker, these cracker games coming up this weekend, they should be absolute blockbusters as we head towards the back end of the season. Will you be back to join me next week for a preliminary final prediction? Yes, I will, mate. And just throw out to all your listeners, Matt, if you 
if you're uh, fanging for some sad, uh, for some Sunday afternoon footy, uh, KO always show one of the Queensland Interest Super Cup games. So get on some quality footy. A lot of every Interest Interest uh, club is basically a feeder to an NRL club, except for the Ipswich Jets, who uh, do are linked with the Knights. Um, both the Titans feeder club, both Burley and Tweed this weekend. Norse play Tweed in one versus four. Norse have got a, a lot of ex NRL boys in there. Tyrone Roberts, M.A. McDonald, Jacob Gagan, who played at Cronulla and at South Sydney and played a lot of New South Wales Cup. Um, Burley play Wynnum in a two in a two v three game on a Sunday. Uh, the one v eight game is um, not one v eight. Uh, five five v eight, I should say. South Logan play Townsville. Uh, they play the other six v seven. Townsville Blackhawks playing South Logan, and the um, and the other game is Redcliffe. Redcliffe playing in the five v eight game versus Sunny Coast Falcons. So some good games. You'll see one on KO if you want. Thanks a lot for having me on, Ollie, and I'll join you next week and we'll dissect the games quickly and see if we can predict some winners for the prelims. Sounds good, righty. See you then. Thanks, mate.